Now, a couple days ago I posted a video about how Laura Senteca being on Jakku was just a plot device the movie used to get all our main characters in one place and to get the story started and moving along. And although that is true, I didn't mean to imply that he was there for absolutely no reason, or that it was just dumb luck that he happened to decide to live and settle down on Jakku and meet Poe there of all places in the galaxy. The main point I was trying to make is that I don't think he was there directly because of Rey. In other words, he wasn't her Obi-Wan Kenobi, he wasn't there to watch and protect her, but he was there for reasons of his own. Unfortunately though, I highly doubt those reasons will get touched on in either of the next two movies, and I say that because he was killed off so quickly that the average person who watches The Force Awakens probably doesn't even remember he was even in there. Because keep in mind that a large portion of people will only ever watch this movie once or maybe twice, and they're never going to remember or care about every little detail that got us to Luke Skywalker at the end of the movie. They're just happy we got there. And also keep in mind, there's no need to overcomplicate the plot or waste runtime explaining a character whose part to play has been fulfilled within the context of the movie. At the end of The Force Awakens, we've gotten to Luke, so there's no need to go back and elaborate further on how we got there in the next two movies. That was what the first movie was about. Just like there's no reason to go back and tell us how or why Lor Senteca got its hands on that map. Now, you watching this video probably care, and I'm right there with you. But again, most people who watched The Force Awakens have never even heard the name Lor Senteca. And that's because he goes unnamed in the movie. Another reason why you shouldn't expect to hear him brought up again in either of the next two movies. So who was Lor Senteca then? Well, we know that early in his life he was actually a bounty hunter of all things, and probably was working as one around the time of the Clone Wars, when there were a lot of cool bounty hunters in the galaxy. This also means he's old enough, as if you couldn't tell by just looking at him, to personally remember the days of the Jedi and how they once safeguarded the galaxy before the Dark Times, before the Empire. We even know he was fascinated by the Jedi, even though he wasn't Force sensitive himself. Which is why I would guess, shortly after the Clone Wars ended, and when the Empire began to tarnish the memory of the Jedi and to erase all evidence of their very existence from the galaxy, he became a member of the Church of the Force, an underground organization that worshipped the Jedi ideals and believed their light would return to the galaxy one day. And as a member of the Church of the Force, he went on to become quite the explorer and sought out ancient sites that were significant to the Jedi and uncovered and helped save artifacts from Imperial archaeologists who were seeking to destroy them. Which leads me to believe there are some truly fascinating Indiana Jones style stories just waiting to be told about this guy in the other sources of canon. Anyway, in his travels he also learned much about the history and secrets of the Jedi Order. So much so that he was sought out by others who wanted to know the true history of the Jedi. And among those was none other than Luke Skywalker himself, who wanted his help after the fall of the Empire when he began to rebuild the Jedi Order. And this is significant to know because it might imply that Luke trained his new order in the old ways, helped taught to him by Lor Senteca. And when I mean old ways, I mean much like how the prequel era Jedi were trained, meaning if he strictly held to it, which is debatable of course, he would have taught no attachment, which is a practice that, even though it is a core belief, many feel he would have abandoned considering it was his love for his father that brought Darth Vader back to the light side. And if Luke did continue to teach no attachment, it's important because it probably means it's less likely that he had a child at some point, though at the same time, it also increases the chances he would have given up that child if he did have one, especially if he didn't believe her to be force sensitive. And considering the force awakened in Rey later in her life, perhaps at first it did lay dormant in her and Luke was unable to sense it and begrudgingly gave her up and somehow she ended up on Jakku. Which really doesn't sound like Luke, but perhaps this is what Mark Hamill doesn't like about his character, that he willingly abandoned his daughter. And then years later, it awoke in her either by chance, the will of the force, or maybe because of something Luke even did to bring her back to him. Anyway, getting back to Lor Santeca, not only did he become friends with Luke, but he also became friends with Leia and her son Ben, who he knew in his youth. This of course explains Kylo Ren's line in the movie when he says, look how old you've become and why Lor Senteca tells him that he knows where he comes from and that he cannot deny the truth that is his family, which also means he knows exactly what's happened to Ben Solo, that he became Kylo Ren of course, and this was quite likely told to him by Luke before he went off in search of the first Jedi Temple. Which of course brings us to the question, why does he have the map to Luke? The simple answer could be Luke gave it to him, though it doesn't answer why he only gave him a fragment of the map. 
However, one new source book, that being the visual encyclopedia, states this very thing, that when Luke Skywalker goes into hiding, he gives Lor Senteca a map fragment showing his destination. And I have a hard time believing they would have overlooked something this important and gotten this information wrong in this book. However, there is another source that completely contradicts this, but it's not one you might consider a concrete source, even though it is pretty much considered canon. And that would be from the bonus levels of the Star Wars Lego The Force Awakens game, which were supposed to tell stories that led up to the start of The Force Awakens, and among them was how Lor Senteca got his hands on the map to Luke. And yes, the stories themselves are supposed to be considered canon, and by that I mean the general way the events played out, but not all that wacky stuff that you tend to find in the LEGO games. However, I'm not sure I've seen this to be 100% confirmed by Lucasfilm either way, but when you consider the real actors lent their voices to this, it does give it some credence, or at least it feels like it does. Now, in the LEGO game, Lor Sendeka, who's been trying to find his old friend Luke for some time, visits an Ottigan enclave on the planet Arthor. There, a group known as the Sacred Order of Ramulus uses what they called the Great Eye of Kalor to map the location to the first Jedi Temple and gave it to Lor Senteca, who then headed back to Jakku with it, where he lived. That's when both the First Order and Resistance showed up to Arthor because they had been on the trail of Lor Senteca for some time, which is something that is very much backed up in the new Poe Dameron comic book series, which lends more credence to the Lego version of events, which I find hard to believe I'm actually saying. Now, back on the planet Arthor, the Resistance was trying to help evacuate the Enclave when Kylo Ren showed up with the Finalizer, and Kylo would eventually mind probe the Autagon leader and learn that Lor Senteca had gotten a piece of the map and was now heading back to Jakku with it, which is how the First Order found him at the start of The Force Awakens, which all sounds pretty well and good, but doesn't explain why the First Order had a part of the map to Skywalker taken from the Imperial Archives. Something tells me that truly might be one of those things we never get fully answered, though I hope I'm wrong. This of course brings us to our last question then. Why did Lor Senteca, who was once known as just the Explorer, pick Jakku to finally settle down on after he retired? Now as I mentioned earlier, there are some who think he was there to watch Rey, but I highly doubt that. By this point in his life, Lor Senteca was a pretty old man, and though he was once a bounty hunter, and no doubt had gotten himself into his fair share of scuffles in his day, I doubt he was capable of being much of a protector anymore. Remember, he was no Jedi like Obi-Wan was when he was on Tatooine to guard Luke. More than likely, he was there to study one last great mystery, and that would be the light side nexus that resides at the center of Jakku, the one we learn about in the Aftermath book series. And to be honest, I'd actually be very surprised if that wasn't the reason he decided to settle there. And yes, it is possible that this nexus is somehow part of Rey's origin, which would mean, indirectly, Lor Senteca was there because of Rey, sorta. However, even if this is the case, I wouldn't expect it to get touched on in the movies, but rather in the other sources of the canon, where I'm sure, in time, the story of Lor Senteca will get flushed out even further for those who want to know, well, pretty much all things Star Wars. Personally, I think the LEGO Games version of events will turn out to be the right one, mainly because the Poe Dameron comic book does seem to be leading us in that direction. Also, one of the other levels in the LEGO game had to do with how C-3PO got his red arm, which I know was the biggest mystery from The Force Awakens for everybody. And the story lined up perfectly and was a prelude to a one-shot comic book that came out. Plus, I think we have to ask one last question here. Why would Luke give anyone a map to the first Jedi Temple? I'm sure the last thing he'd ever want was for that map to fall into the wrong hands, and Lor Senteca wasn't exactly a young man that was going to keep it safe for years and years to come. Also, Luke didn't seem overly pleased that Rey had found him on that island, which leads me to believe he didn't ever want to be found by anyone. But I guess we won't know that for sure until The Last Jedi finally comes out. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to let me know what you think. And if you hope we hear more about Lor Senteca, either in the movies or other sources of canon. So leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And if you liked this video, check out some of my other ones or go ahead and subscribe. If you've already done all that, then thanks for your continued support. If you want to know when I upload new videos, hit the notification button or just follow me on Twitter. And as always, thanks for watching.